Hello. Hello Welcome again. Welcome back. Episode 13? 13, yeah. Wow. Yeah, lucky number 13. <laughs> we are now in Columbus, Texas. Yes. Columbus, this place is cool. Columbus, Texas is between Houston and San Antonio. It's mm -hmm. west of Houston. Um, and we drove down from north of Houston, so we kind of did a little, like, whoop, L-shape. Um. Was this our southernmost spot? No, San Antonio was. Okay, okay. Yeah, we were, it's. So we're heading south in Texas at this point. Heading southwest in Texas, yes. Cool, yeah. Um, yeah, we stayed at Colorado River Thousand Trails RV Park. Mm -hmm. Um. It was, the river was really low, so we didn't Super really low. see water, but we could see the riverbed. Um, I think this one we had a hard time finding a spot. We were allowed to pick our own in this one too, right? Yeah, but there wasn't yeah. a lot available. Right, yeah, I remember we were rolling around for a little bit. Was and this then... the one that we didn't have a sewer? No, no. It uh... was, I think it was. Actually, yeah, yeah, you're right. We didn't have a sewer. That's correct. So there was no spots available that had a sewer hookup. Um, so we just had water and, um, and power and power. So we had to really conserve our water while we were there. So that way we wouldn't have to take our trailer over to the dump yeah. station and dump it until we were ready to leave. We were only there for what? Three days? Three days, I think. Yeah. So it was, so, a, it was a shorter stay at least. It worked was, out well out. for yeah. us to have that spot <laughs> yeah. that didn't have a hook up at that point in time now we don't have our tote with us we left that um in storage we yeah we didn't want to have to like strap it up every time because we figured most of the places we're going to be staying at will have sewage hookups, and that's so. been the case we've yeah. only ran into that was the only one so far that we've um had to worry about not having sewer right yeah so yeah yeah that worked out <laughs> um so we uh we picked the spot uh basically we drove down towards the river's edge and we picked a spot that was towards one of the ends, um, actually kind of by the entrance to that area. Yeah. So we were, you know, we weren't tucked back in a corner. Um, we were in a rel relatively central spot. And we had what, th we had maybe three spots we could pick from without paying yeah. an extra, like, I think it was $10 a day or something to go be in the new section. Yeah. 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 Um, but... but we could see the, like the, it was kind of like a ledge down into the river yeah um they had it all fenced off so no one just like walked over the edge but at first as we were driving in i was like oh well there's a it's totally dried out riverbed let's go like walk down there the one day and then finally once we got out and walked over there it's like oh no there's there's a pretty big river down there <laughs> it was still a big river but it was super super low yeah you could tell it's it's probably 10 feet higher normally so our drive from Willis to Columbus was pretty short. I think it was maybe two hours. Yeah, that was a short drive. We got there around 2 p.m. Um, and it was lovely. It was like 70 degrees out. That was beautiful. So yeah. <laughs> we've gone between like summer weather and like slightly warmer winter weather this entire trip. It's been below freezing a really couple times. Nice. Yeah, I think we only got ice twice, and it was gone by the next day. So. We haven't had to... Say that one more time. We only got... <laughs> We've only gotten ice twice, and it was gone the next day. So that's yeah. been super nice. Um, a lot of days that were either at freezing or just above or just below. Yeah. So we've had some days where we've worn winter coats and bundled up to go out. But, I mean... I don't think it ever got into the negatives, though. Or no, even, like, even it, like the 10s. It never got below 20. Yeah. No. So we've, we've been fortunate in that sense. It's so nice. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> so right when we got there, it was nice out, so we decided to go out exploring. We found out that nearby was the largest and largest live oak tree in the state. That's right. Yeah. So And it was right in Columbus, so we didn't have too far of a drive, and we went and explored the little town we were staying in. Yeah. Um, yeah. This tree looked like it was part of someone's backyard. Yeah, but it, it was, was right next to a house for sure. <laughs> fenced off around where the yard was, so we weren't in somebody's yard. It even looked like there was um, a little like pull off for cars, but I I had driven past it. We parked in like we some parked in the lot. Dollar General's parking lot There's and walked around the town. Yep, yep. 
Um, because it was like, it was like not even a block away. Um, but this tree was just this historical figure in just right next to someone's house. So it's like the thing. town was kind of grown up around the tree in yeah. a way. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. Had a little plaque and stuff. Yeah. You know, get Let some info on it. Everyone knows. So we have a lot of photos there. We'll show you that photo walk. Shot, um, shot some Insta360 footage there too. Another part of town was a very old opera house from 1882 that's yeah. been converted into... Like, to house newer businesses, but the original structure still stood. And there was an entire, like, street of historical-looking buildings um, that were just converted to hold newer businesses. There was, and like, um, a really cool Capitol building, too. It, it was, like, like, something that looked like a castle. Yeah, it, look, it looked like one of the towers of a castle. Um, yeah. I did a little bit of flying around there. I, I checked on the Before You Fly app, and there was literally no one in town, like... I think we maybe saw like three or four cars. Yeah, the entire it was, time it was pretty dead. It was nice to walk around there. It was, um, it was kind of earlier afternoon too, wasn't it? Like we, yeah. we went at like kind of business hours. It still. was like three to five thirty. We were there. Was this a weekend? No, it was just weekdays. Uh, Sunday. It was a Sunday. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's right. It, <laughs> it was, was a everything Sunday. was closed and it looked like everyone was chilling at home. Sundays are ghost towns. Yeah. Um, but. Nice for us for photos. Yeah, good for drone, too, because then I'm not flying over people's heads yeah. or doing anything that I really shouldn't be doing. Um, but it was, it was just cool to see, like, oh, that how they preserve the history yeah, of yeah. the town. Because, like, those buildings have been there since the 1800s, some of them. It was cool. It really had, like, an older vibe to it. But then there were, like, you'd turn a corner. Um, like, there was this little um, courtyard yeah. that we walked back into that was very modern. Um, like yeah, it had that this, was beautiful. Like, Every business should have a courtyard like that. Patterns in the stone walkway. There were benches back there to go chill. Really pretty. Uh, I think there was, like, moss or, or some sort of ivy all over the walls, too. Yeah, there was, like, a vine thing. And then they gorgeous. had cute little tables set up, like a little outdoor cafe. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, and you got to have Whataburger for the first time. That's right. Yeah. What'd you think? I really enjoyed Whataburger. That was, uh, I, I think that was, it was up pretty high in my tier list. You rated the burger pretty high, but not the fries. Yeah. Well, I wasn't super big on the fries. Um, I don't think they, uh, crisped them up enough like they normally do. Yeah. They're just a little, a little bit mushy that time, but you know, <laughs> it, it happens. Um, that, that was probably just luck of the draw, but the burger was really good. And I, I, I think also we bought it and then like drove home yeah. and then ate at home. So I, I didn't get to experience it fresh, which I think is, that, that might've been the fries can affect it a little bit too. Fall. That could be too. Cause I think um, 10 minutes in a, in a box and they're, they're toast. A lot of burgers so good. Yeah. That was really good. Something interesting that Texas does that we've noticed at a couple places, um, when they give you chicken fingers, they give you some country gravy with it. <laughs> I oh! totally forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. I wish every place gave you country gravy with your chicken. Ashley loves country gravy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was just so, so good. Like, I don't usually use a dipping sauce. I dipped everything in country gravy. <laughs> I dipped the chicken. I dipped my French fries. I dipped yeah. my biscuit. Yeah. yeah, you usually don't even ask for like dipping sauces at if no, you ever go to like fast food places. But if there's white country gravy, I'm all about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Waterburger had that. Um, DQ had that when we went to DQ. That's right. Yeah. Um, and a couple other places offered it for like fifty cents extra, and I'm like, why would you want like ketchup or honey mustard or anything when there's country gravy to be yeah. had <laughs> oh so good um this is uh i used the activity center for dance that night on That's monday right. night um i probably flew in my simulator or edited or we yeah i started noticing that if it was like raining outside or we didn't have enough flat space to put my dance floor out to dance that I could go to the activity center and there's usually yeah. nobody there. Um, Perfect place for activities. So I was <laughs> able to either have the activity center to myself or duck off into like the office meeting room and move the tables away and 
have plenty of space to do my dance classes. So thanks, Thousand Trails, for having activity centers that <laughs> I can use and have all to myself. <laughs> kept me warm, kept me dry a couple nights. <laughs> I remember the one day it was, like, pouring yeah, when I went to the yeah. activity center. There have been a couple times where we've gone to the activity center together, too. Yeah. Um, I think only one one or two times you were doing dance, but yeah, you'd usually dance, I'd fly, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but the next day, oh, 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 Shiner Bach Brewery. Yes. My favorite beer. We did the tour. Yes. It was awesome. It was fun. <laughs> um, I know you say you've like done the beer tour before and seen the process of beer and it's like, I think here's I'm... our hops and here's our <laughs> machines. But it's like, uh, there was a lot of history in there with like the owner yeah. of Shinerbach and how um, they kind of what was that guy? They invited that guy from like from, Bavaria, yeah, yeah, to come and like perfect their recipe. That's and like back in the 1950s they, or something. They had a good beer, but they didn't know how to market it or something. And he came over and gave the finishing touches and helped them really turn into what they are today. Um, he's and he's a brewmaster. That he's they kind of hired. like, yeah, he's their brewmaster. He was their first brewmaster and he kind of made it what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. hearing the history was definitely interesting. I think I'm just sort of jaded on the, the whole, like, here's our giant keg. We make beer. Go drink the beer. This is where we package the beer. You know, yeah. I just, I just, I feel like I've heard all that before, but the story of how the, like, how the the brewmaster position was passed down throughout the years how it um went they to all a, have their hats on the wall didn't from... they have a female brewmaster in like the 60s or something like that I think too so. like it, it it was it was really cool how it was passed down and like hearing the history of the whole place they all had their hats on the wall to commemorate him who the brewmasters were yeah yeah um yeah it was it was cool to see and with the tour, with the cost of the tour was like $25 a person, mm -hmm. you got a tote bag, you got a bottle opener, and... Three with, beers each? We each got a pint glass to keep. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And three beers each. So, yeah, needless to say, we, we had a beer before the tour, we oh, had yeah. two beers after the tour, and we were, we were a little, a little crazy. <laughs> I was more crazy than you were. I yeah, think. I was. I was I, flying. I was fine to. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> to Rub fly even. Ruby red on draft was incredible. Oh yeah, yeah. Their, <laughs> their drafts were really good. They had like the. It was cool to try the other kinds that they don't bottle and send to stores because usually up our way we get like the main Shiner Bach. Yeah. We have Ruby red in the summertime, and we have like. Maybe the IPA, which I don't like IPAs. You Not a big like fan of IPAs. IPAs, no. But there's so many more. They have, like, the original Schinerbach, um brew flavor. They have, like, the, what was it, 1912 or something was one of their originals? I, th I think so. I'm not sure what the year was on it, but it was, like, their original recipe and their original style of brewing. Like, that, yeah. that first brewmaster that they had, this was that beer that they made, so... They have like a like a classic version. Uh, that was really good on tap. I think I had one had that was like a raspberry. Seasonal strawberry blonde. Shiner premium. Mm -mm. Maybe it was premium. That was the old one. Yeah, there was premium and there was one that was like a year. I think it was 1915 or something. 1915 was when they mm. were struggling. Pei Spatzel was the guy. Yeah, that's right. Um, and it's still called the Spatzel um, Brewery. Yeah, right? it's called the Spatzel Brewery. Yeah, That's, it was cool. There was a lot of history there, and it was it was really informative. They were really good at making the the tour interesting throughout. Like they had little tidbits and facts about everything. They do everything there too. It's their only brewery. Yeah. They brew every drop of Shiner in Shiner. They have specially um, patented yeasts. That they acquire, sure. um, that they have stored in, like, banks in different places. Yeah, well, yeast stuff is, like, even for some types of bread, like, that's, like, really high-end, so they have important yeah. stuff. Because, like, you have to keep the original 
uh, cultures alive. Yeah. Right? So like, if it gets too hot, if it gets too cold, it dies. Yeah. So you, they have the like all over the place. There are these like yeast banks and stuff. It's it's interesting. Yeah. So <laughs> they have their own yeast that's patented. Nobody else has it. Nobody else can use it. Yeah. Um, and that's what they use for all their beer. So their beer is always very consistent. And it always will be, I guess. Um, it doesn't so. yeah. sound like they have any plans to expand other than their own factory. Um, and there was even like a wastewater treatment plant across the street that they use to process everything and recycle all their water that they use in yeah. brewing. Yeah. So they have a whole, whole fully contained uh, system right there. Mm -hmm. um, but they're doing everything they can to keep it environmentally friendly also if you if you have been on the tour before if you've been there by any chance um they just remodeled the whole tour yeah experience. that's they true. were just talking about how they just updated everything and added in these like there were automatic videos. doors and videos that would play like it was it was really cool yeah i liked it I liked they also it. let me fly there which i thought was <laughs> awesome um yeah they had a nice little picnic table set up outside it sounds like it's a really nice place to work the yeah. workers get like an entire case or two a month um they can have up to three beers after every shift they work for free yeah yeah it was something like um, that um anything that anything that has like a broken can or something they're allowed to keep the rest of the case anything that got damaged in shipping i think there was something with Hold that on. we're gonna hear this one for sure <coughs> Yeah, get the coughs and everything out. <laughs> okay, we're good. Yeah, the workers get a lot of free beer, so... It was sweet, yeah. I, I remember them talking about, like, the benefits package and all the, the stuff that the, the workers get, and everyone yeah. just being like, can I come work here? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that was yeah. good. Yeah. Definitely a cool spot. Definitely a um, a great visit. So if you're if you're in the area, if you're passing through, I'd stop and check it out. Definitely go to Shiner. Go to the K Schwitzel Brewery. Mm -hmm. Go have some beers. There were some cool like um, like walkways and stuff in the area too. Yeah, it was nice to just walk around that area too. There was yeah. a nice bridge and stuff. They had like a branded couple branded cars set up that you could like pose in front of. Yeah. Um. Very photogenic place. Very much so. Oh, yeah. We got some cool photos of it, too, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, we had news that it was going to get really cold very soon. Yes. But not until we got to our next location. So, we were getting ready to uh, fill up our propane and get to our next spot. Stock up and, and hunker, hunker down. down. <laughs> so, we'll see you in Lake Hills next. Peace, everybody. Peace.